Before this video officially starts, guys, ever since our videos have been getting a thousand likes, nothing that we own has blown up. I'm not saying there's a correlation there, but just in case, let's try to get this video to a thousand likes. Thanks, guys. What's going on, Team Boosted? Welcome to episode one of the 240Z turbo diesel build. In this video, we are going to be completely removing the 2.3, which is sold, by the way. We've gotten a ton of emails asking to buy this. It's no longer available. It is sold, and... Um, it's going to be on its way to its new owner. But we'll be removing this and we will be getting the OM606 in here. And we brought some skills too. We wanna to know exactly how much weight we're gonna gain going from the 2.3 in the Richmond 4 Plus 1 to the turbo diesel and the CD09 box. So we'll know exactly how much weight gain. There will be a little bit, but I think it won't be as much as a lot of you guys think it might be. First thing worth noting is we made our core support modular. So in theory, it should just pull straight up now that everything's been detached and drained. Holy shit, that is the coolest thing ever. That's our radiator and our- Oh, that was gross. Iron block, iron head. Radiator intercooler, we're not gonna be able to use that again because the new engine's gonna come up to here, so. Yes, it made almost 20 PSI with the turbo that had one bolt on it because these engines like to vibrate everything off. Our mounts were not good enough. Wow. This thing's actually pretty fucking beefy. Yeah. <laughs> this is... Such a beefy baby. Here she is. Now, the scales. Let's find out how much less, because inevitably it is going to be less. Then the uh, OM606, which looking at now looks like a fucking train engine. It's on the scales. A lot. So, yeah, holy shit. Quick maths. Uh, phone maths. <laughs> uh, quick maths would be 550 something, 52. By 50. 550 pounds for this drive train. She a chunk. This is not a light engine. This is a <laughs> iron head, iron block, thick boy. That's why you can make, not on sorry, so that's the thing, is the block's very good, but you need to replace the rods, which of course we did. With this setup though, this engine should have pushed five, 550 before wanting to do like a partial Would fill. Would have pushed. Yes, but we, we never did E85, um, which I'm assuming the the next owner is going to. Okay, I tear that one out, but it teared out five pounds heavy, so just minus five off this one. So that's 261, 225. It's about four, 490, so yeah. Yep, put it on that one. Let that thing sit for a second. 16, not bad. I guess 90, it was off by like quite it's like a bit. 600, so it's about 60 pounds heavier, no clutch, yeah. no turbo. Okay, so if you account for the turbo, the manifold, and the clutch, looks like we're gonna gain at the worst Case scenario, 100 pounds going turbo diesel. So, what did the uh, Richmond weigh in at? Uh, we don't know we because don't we know. never separated them. Okay, so for science, we're gonna doodle bop this in there and see how it looks. Uh, Sam was just pointing out that the sump is on the wrong side, but that's yeah. okay. Front sump, these things have a front steer, so it's not, it's not gonna sit all the way down. Even if they didn't sell one, we've made sump changes in the past, so. We literally made a dry sump pan for my 13B on the Beetle that actually did work just fine, so I, I, I think we can make a normal oil pan and pick up. All right, so it's only the inches. only reason it's sitting this high is because the uh, sump is in the wrong spot. Like we were just also, talking. it's currently sitting on top of the studs on the bottom of the motor mounts on the uh, 2.3 motor mounts well, we welded in. It's got plenty of room. It's gonna fit great. You know what's actually really funny is that it looks like where we have the motor mount pedestals for the 2.3 are actually very, very close to where we're gonna have to put the yeah. ones for this engine. Turbo's on the same side, so we're gonna be able to use our side pipe. Yep. Come right out the cool hole thing. No, that not you... that. I'm not doing that. Oh, we're the long one. Well, yeah. I mean, we gotta put the screamer though, man. We the we'll have the wastegate go out. There. Yeah, we'll put the wastegate. Well, I just don't want the car covered in soot all the time. You know what's nice though? Call, me a, call me a little bitch, but... anymore. Okay, a couple of things learned back in the old garage. We need better lighting in here for sure. Uh, gonna get that, and uh, there's a few more things that it needs, but we actually got the engine out, and this one's all set and ready to go, and it only took a couple hours, so I mean, it's it's not very hard to work in here, so if you just have a small garage at home, uh, you can do, I mean, you can do this shit in your driveway if you really wanted to. Um, so right now we're waiting on parts from the UK. Oh, actually, uh, big shout out to Diesel Pump UK. 
If you're building one of these, they're, in my opinion, the best place to get all the stuff you need. We're getting everything we need for 500 wheel horsepower for them. So check out Diesel Pump UK. Um, we're waiting for that mechanical pump. You don't need to do anything with the injectors on this engine because uh, they're pretty much just check valves. The pump is the thing that dictates how much fuel goes into this engine. Um, diesels, of course, don't have throttle bodies, so it's all air all the time. So the other part of the equation for that is a big freaking turbo. Um, we have a few diesel turbos in the shop. We'll bring over here and size them up and see what one uh, might work best for this. You don't need to do anything with the internals. These are very stout uh, for our power goals. We shouldn't even need to crack this thing. I do have some unfortunate news to share with you guys. Uh, um, this was actually supposed to be a one rotor speedster video. And we, we did go to the dyno. I'm gonna roll those clips right now. The sound was not coming from this. Made it over, 5,000 RPM, almost hit six. AFRs are looking good. Seems like the intake manifold may have actually fixed most of the issues, I don't know. Uh, remains to be seen. So we got 1,000 more RPMs. I don't know if James already explained it, but it's still only making 110 horsepower, so. We're really trying to find out what's wrong now. No idea. So Darden tried several different levels of fueling and it never really changed anything. It's falling on its face. So we're attempting to run it as a 13B, as a two rotor in the mega square settings instead of a one rotor. We're gonna see if that does anything. So as you can see, the car's pretty much having the same exact problem. It's making 110 horsepower and then it runs out of fuel and there's no reason that it should be running out of fuel. Um, the gauge reads the, the correct pressure the entire time it has plenty of injector. Um, Darden doesn't know, we talked to, well he talked to Abel on the phone, who's like a rotary guru. He had some suggestions, so we have some parts on the way. Uh, it, it's hit or miss whether any of this stuff's gonna be the issue, but we're waiting on these parts, but it's looking like we're not going to get back to the speed cert until after the holidays. It's not broken, it's just being difficult. If you guys know anything about one rotors, Feel free to email us. Um, we don't know what the problem is. Uh, Darden has tuned uh, several two rotors, 13Bs and things like that, and no issues with those. Uh, the techniques and everything, we were, we were adjusting all, so, all sorts of parameters and just no luck, so. Unfortunately, the one rotor is on a small hiatus, but it's not broken, like I said, it's coming back. It's just a little frustrating at this point, but we're gonna keep chipping away at it until it does what we want it to do. It'll be a breath of fresh air, actually, just this thing. Uh, maybe not. I'm not going to speak too soon. Every project can give you problems. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and pick the winners for this video giveaway. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the channel, we give away stuff from BoostedShades.com. Most videos, even if you don't win, check out BoostedShades.com. It is uh, a good way to support us. It's financially responsible for, him, for at least some of the stuff that we build. This video's winners are James Ballas, Esco, and Kai. You guys can hit us up at Team Boosted at BoostedShades.com or through any of our social media platforms. We'll get back to you and ship you something. If you guys want to win, all you got to do is like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Sometimes we ask you guys questions to make it a little bit easier to think of something in the comment section that is... Uh, this video's question is, what is a project that you shouldn't have done in your driveway or garage, but you did it anyway? You could drop that in the comments if you'd like, or just comment anything in your eligible to win stuff from uh, BoostedShades.com. That's going to do it for this one. I uh, will see you next time with more Turbo Diesel Datsun.